Welcome everyone back to Wudong Wei. We're still working through all the basic stances. Today we've got a new stance called Dingbu or Nail Stance. This week we're still going through all these different stances each video. Uh, they all kind of share a little bit of the same quality though. So as we went over yesterday with this Sanchi Bu, this back rooted leg stance, now we're going to move into Nail Stance, which actually we're going to bring this foot back and have 100% of the weight on one leg. This stance specifically is more of a transition. So whereas while we're using this stance as more of a momentum, maybe a striking, maybe moving through Shingi, Bagua, or Baji, some of these internal explosive forms, when we get into the nail stance, this version of it is more of a transition. So to know what this posture does is really nice as we're moving through different stances, particularly in Taiji, we're going to be transferring all the weight back to one foot. And as we do that, this position in between movements is actually going to be the nail stance. So the stance in particular is mostly a transition, but the idea of it is really clear for what we'll work in the next couple videos. We want to get all of the weight on one leg and still have a good posture to where we can move from there into other positions. Going back to the first week, one of the biggest problems when you're first learning any of these stances, particularly Mabu, is that when we step out, we sometimes drop our weight too quickly. So if you go back to that first that first week and we think about stepping up Mabu, we don't step like this and kind of drop into the stance. What we do rather is we sink the body down and step out to the side. Okay, so that position, that very first step that we kind of went over quickly in the first week is actually a, a type of nail stance, is we're going to drop down and get all of the weight onto this right leg. By doing that, we're very rooted, very balanced, and this range of motion becomes wider. So this empty leg becomes more free to move. That is kind of the main quality of the nail stance of Dingbu. A transition stance, but also a very well rooted stance for your other leg. So you can think about it in a few different ways, is that we're driving down like a nail through the ground. And also the foot that's empty is positioned like a nail, with the point just barely touching. Okay. So the position of the nail stance is, is important because the imagery comes from the empty leg. And that means when we actually lift the foot up, the placement of the toe of your empty leg should be right in the middle of the arch of the other foot. So halfway through the other foot. You don't want to have it too much in front and you don't want to have it back. Having it back like this, if we were to sink down in this posture, is really just squatting or it's more close to a shebu, like this posture we worked on before. So with the nail stance, you actually want to have the toes right in the middle of the arch of the other foot. And that's going to give you a good posture as you sink down and as you go farther. Then you, you have weight on the toes. You might press a little bit. The best is that you don't go too deep to where you can actually keep all the weight on your squatted leg and the toes can stay empty to where this leg, if it could, it could be free to move out. Okay, so this is your press. And then you have this idea is like the tip of the nail is your toe. Touching the ground, but not pressing too hard in the ground. So try to avoid going up on the toes like the ball. If you're going far enough down to where you're doing this or you're sticking the butt out or you're leaning forward, then it's too deep, okay? So with that as the overview of Dingbu, let's break it down in a way that you can practice it separate from the transitions throughout all of our forms. Like I said, you'll have it in your basic stances, you'll have it in Taiji, and as a transition between postures. But how can we drill it separate from that? So I'm gonna give you a way that you can kind of practice it in a real simple way, okay? So for the nail stance, what we can do is have the feet right together, bring the hands up and have them out to the side. And then we can put the toe right in the middle of that arch and sink down, trying to keep the body straight and the heels flat. Then we can come back up and we can just repeat this a few times, like a set of 10, squatting down and kind of getting all the weight on one leg, being sure to not bounce. So you don't want to sink down and just kind of up and down. Um, you lose posture, and you're not really training any stability. You want to kind of sink slow, hold a moment, and then press up without straightening the leg all the way. So you keep a little engaged. Don't lock your knee. Uh, if you get tired, that's really easy to kind of like stress the joint too much. Keep a little engaged, slow sink, pause, drive up, and repeat. Slow sink, drive up. Then you can switch and do on both sides. So you have the same kind of pattern. The hands can be however. Sometimes we do in front. If you have a tendency of losing your balance falling back, an easy way is to lean your hands in front and you can sink down and come up. The only problem with that is sometimes you might lean a little too far. So if we have the hands positioned out to the side, kind of like our yesterday posture with the Sanchi Bu, but then just up and level right across. Pretty easy, however is okay, wherever you can find your balance. 
then you look this way, the opposite of your nail foot, and then you just press down, hold, and raise up. And then you can re relax once you get finished. Another thing to think about when you get there is that when you're doing this nail stance, the depth is important. When we're doing the nail stance, the reason we go down low is again so we can have that range of motion to reach out with our free leg. Okay, so our empty leg is free to move and free to come back because all the weight stays here. So we have all this range of motion. Really, really useful for Taiji if we have like, for example, we have this kind of sinking position where we're holding the ball, uh, ball shell suit. Then when we step out into Mabu, we can step really far without losing our weight. Then from here, we can transition into that. The same thing when we come back, if we bring the foot in, we can soft put all the weight here first and then pick the weight up and an empty foot can come back in ready for a different position, okay? So making sure you take your time with that, for the drill, it's not as important to go as low as you possibly can. What's more important rather is to get to a flat level. So if you sink down, for example, and you drop down to about here where this leg is flat, this is a good position. If you go down lower than that in the beginning, you might find that you do collapsing posture and you cave the back in. This isn't gonna be as good because you're kind of losing the point of the practice. You're taking the weight off of the leg and leaning forward. So stick to some height that's not too low, like a good steady squat. One, up, two, up, and so on. Some of the common things that might happen when you're first training that are really normal. Like for example, the heel coming off the ground and losing balance or sitting too far back and losing balance backwards or not having the strength to go low. So a few ways you can break this down. If it's, if it's a flexibility issue, um, you really have to spend a lot of time with the flexibility of the back of the ankle. So using the wall as a support system is really nice. If we find a wall and we have something we can hold on to, that's about waist height. Uh, so something like this was pretty good if I can put my hand around it and you can start facing it and just doing like a basic sink to where your feet are a little bit apart and you're just going to drop the body down trying to keep your weight back. And again, we're going to be working on your Mabu type position. So the same thing with Mabu, if you're getting this structure down halfway, then we just kind of slowly bring the legs closer and closer together to get a more narrow posture. When you can start getting the feet together 50-50 and squatting down free, while keeping the back straight and coming up unassisted, then we're ready to slowly move into the nail stance. From there, again, you can be using the wall, pick one leg and do like trying to keep the leg up and keep the heel flat and rising up, trying to drive from the legs and do less time pulling with the hands. Sometimes people use the wall and it's very hard to improve because you find, oh, with the wall is very easy, but without it, it becomes difficult. So you wanna find a way to taper your use of the wall. If you're holding it, lightly hold it. Start to use less fingers or do something like this or really think about driving through the leg. If you're sunk down and you're here and you're using one leg, when you get to the bottom and you're here, this is only for balance. You actually wanna spend most of the force driving from the leg and, barely, and being able to let go of the wall at some point. So maybe you're not holding the wall until you need it and then you're not holding it when you come up is better, okay? So breaking that down in different ways is really important. Um, but this stance is gonna be really useful as we move forward in the next couple of videos because now we're getting into 100% on one leg. So we have our 70-30 and we have our nail stance. Now we have 100% weight on one leg and we have a little bit more freedom of movement in our empty leg. So remember that we're gonna keep going through that in the next couple of videos. So join me tomorrow. We're gonna to continue this conversation as we move into a new stance, the single leg stance. Very similar, but working on a little bit more balance. So we'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to hit subscribe, check out all the information underneath. There you can navigate to the Ways of Wudam Patreon account. And by becoming a patron, you can get access to all the main channel resources around martial arts, Taoist philosophy, even Chinese music, in group classes, live streams, one-on-one -on -one courses, and a bunch of other stuff as well. So I hope you'll go check that out, and I hope to see you there. Once more, thank you for all your support. We'll see you in the next video.